so yes hello everyone am i audible let me just check so yes everyone let me know am i audible is the screen clear so that we can start the session those who have joined yeah okay so we will uh, in this uh, session i will discuss high yield anatomy mcq series okay so yes my dear aspirants are my audible is the screen clear <clears throat> okay so yes everything is clear and we can start the session i'm so sorry i got delayed for few minutes so i'm so sorry for it so let's start with the session this is high yield mcq series targeting and conquering neat pg 2022 examination okay so before starting the session i would like to tell you about myself myself dr mona lisa and i have done my md anatomy from armed force medical college pune and i am here to discuss the important anatomy mcqs which will be highly fruitful and uh, important for you so that you can conquer your dream rank in the competitive exam of neat pg 2022 so that is what which is needed and it is important that we should uh, exactly um, proceed like that okay so yes um, pankhuri tiwari yes good evening ya yeah, amol mystery ya yeah, great so yes great so we will have the discussion of the mcqs right now now before starting the session i would like to tell you about the special class features i also want to let the students know that um, my special class series is uh, is there and you can join me so those students who are necess uh, who want to have the session uh, for the special free platform series they can join me and for that what they can do they can uh, join me in the evening session so in the evening i am taking the mcq session so you can be present for that evening session the timing will be 6 pm so the timing of the sessions will be 6 pm session so you can join me for the special class session yeah and this will be a uh, session which is free platform you can use the code anat10 to unlock and uh, if you are using the platform for the first time you can download the unacademy app and you can use this code so you can respond to the poll you can know where you are landing and what is the area weak areas which needs more of revision you can get a notification regarding my session you can uh, after finishing the session you can also download the lecture notes and anywhere anytime read from the top educators of unacademy platform now i would also like to tell you about the plus subscription when i am talking about the plus subscription all 19 subjects are completed in a very systematic way you can assess both the live and the recorded version you can study from india's top educators you can compete in live tests and quizzes you can study on the device of your choice you can assess more than 25000 mcqs and coming soon is the printed notes so with one year of subscription and more you are be provided with the printed notes of the anacademy platform what about iconic subscription when i am talking about iconic subscription that means merging of the anacademy plus platform and that of prep platform you can study from best of two platforms and where you can have a session of clinical and integrated essentials video lectures from the dream team qbank 3 with active guidance tags can be assessed by you rapid revision and snapshots so all these are the benefits of iconic subscription so just go and grab this opportunity my dear aspirants and and land up with better rank in the competitive exam when i am talking for the so before starting the session i want to show you the slide where you can have uh, the idea of plus and iconic subscription a comparison of both has been done so you can assess to it and you uh, you can decide whether you should go for iconic or that of neat pg subscription of an academy you can use my code anat10 for availing 10% discount that means a greater than 20% discount overall so just go and grab this opportunity my dear aspirants I would also like to tell you about the MCQs. So now we can start with the MCQ session. All the best to everyone, those who are present here. Okay, so let's start with the first MCQ. The structure that lies, the structure that lies, the structure that lies uh, lateral to the distal radial tubercle. So four options are there: extensor pollicis longus, extensor carpi radialis longus, brachio radialis, extensor carpi annularis. The structure that lies lateral to the distal radial tubercle. four options are there my dear aspirants and mark the correct answer yeah good evening to all those who are present 
so yes i will provide you with 15 to 30 seconds and then you can provide me with your answer and then we can proceed to the next mcq so according to you which is the best answer a b c or d lateral to the distal radial tubercle yes prakhar uh, tiwari prakhar tiwari amol motilal according to you which is the best answer so my dear aspirants the correct answer is b extensor carpi radialis longus so distal radial tubercle the other name of distal radial tubercle is it is also called as lister's tubercle it is also called as lister's tubercle which is seen on the distal aspect of the radius yeah so absolutely right motilal so and we know that two muscle tendons are related to it one lateral and one medial so medial muscle tendon is extensor pollicis longus and laterally it is having the relation of extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis so yes let me just highlight this diagram so i just want you to show this diagram where i want to highlight this okay so okay so here you can see uh, firstly i would like to show you the location of distal radial tubercle so this is the location of distal radial tubercle this structure so this is distal radial tubercle this is the distal radial tubercle got it now see here at the location of distal radial tubercle we have got two tendons so if we talk about the tendon which is passing just medial to it so see here this is the tendon which is passing just medial to it this tendon is passing medially and the two tendons which is passing lateral to it and the two tendons which is passing lateral to it you can see here these two tendons are passing lateral to it so this is ecrl and ecrb is lateral and ec extensor pollicis longus is passing medial to it so this is an important uh, relation so please note down here i want to write in relation to distal radial tubercle the tendon which passes lateral to it will be ecrl and that of ecrb extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis the tendon which is passing medial to it if we talk about the medial tendon it is epl that is extensor pollicis longus okay so is it clear to everyone so let's move on to the second one second mcq okay let's move on to the second mcq syndactylity involves so what is exactly the meaning of syndactylity extra finger or toes absence of digit or limbs abnormal fusion of fingers and toes small hand or feet being attached to the trunk by short bone instead of long bones so according to you which is the best answer syndactylity involves syndactylity involves so your time starts now so yes motilal amol and prakhar tiwari do you want to give the answer according to you which is so yes abnormal fusions of prakhar and motilal is telling abnormal fusions of fingers and toes syndactylity involves so yes the correct answer is absolutely uh, right answer is given by c is absolutely correct answer both uh, prakhar tiwari and motilal is absolutely correct syndactylity so i would like to show you a diagram of syndactylity where you can see abnormal fusions of fingers actually this is a condition in where uh, there is fusion of the fingers and toes and in this diagram you can see the fingers are abnormally fused to each other as you can see from both palmer and dorsal view so this is a diagram showing syndactylity now what are the other options and i want you to give a brief explanation of all the options so ectrodactylity split hand which is also called as split hand cleft hand and you can see here that there is absence or deficiency of one or more central digit of the hand so you can see there is absence of the digit and fingers as shown in the diagram there is absence of central digit of hands or foot and this condition is called as split hand or split foot malformation ectrodactylity this is the meaning of ectrodactylity the hands of the uh, the hands and the feet of people with ectrodactylity are often described as claw hand 
Simran, yes, clue hand and me include one thumb or the other finger, usually the little or ring finger or syndactility can be also associated along with uh, the ectrodactility. So, here there is absence. So, very nicely you can see in this image and you can understand the meaning there is absence of one or more central digit of hands or toes. Yes, Simran, hi dears. Polydactility, what do you mean by the word polydactility? Polydactility means extra fingers or toes are present while ectrodactility means absence of the digit. So, here you can see six fingers are there. So, there is extra presence of fingers or toes. Okay, done with this. Now, let us move on to the third MCQ. All the best to everyone. Which limb differed? defect is correctly matched according to its definition. So, which is the correct match the following? So, read all the match the following and give me the answer. <laughs> Meromelia means partial absence of one or more extremity. Meromelia. Phacomelia means all segments of extremities are present but abnormally short. Micromelia means Absence, partial absence of one or more extremities. Emilia means long bones are absent, small bones of hands and feet are attached to the trunk by short irregular bones. So, according to you, which is the correct match the following? Your time starts now. Simran, Prakhar, Motilal, mark your correct answer. So, just waiting for your answer, mark it right. Which is the correct match the following according to the definition provided? <clears throat> so, I got an answer from Motilal. What about others? What about others? Emilia. So, uh, Prakhar Tiwari is telling Amelia is correct. So, let me give you the correct explanation for this. Actually, when we are talking, actually the correct answer is meromelia. Partial absence of one or more extremity is the word called as meromelia. So, I have included the whole definition and I want that you should know the definition of each of these terms. So, see here. When the word emilia is used, the word emilia means complete absence of one or more extremities. There will be complete absence of one or more extremities when we are using the word meromelia. So, this was the correctly mentioned in the MCQ and this was the correct answer for the MCQ. Meromelia means partial absence of one or more extremities. It is the partial absence of one or more extremities. When in the, in the patient all the segments of the extremities are absent and uh, the presence of these segments are abnormally short, this is called as micromelia. So, this condition is called as micromelia. Phacomelia means long bones are absent, small hands and feet are attached to the trunks by short irregular bones. Got it? So, see here. So, we got the correct definition. So, is it clear to everyone? So, now you can see we have got the definition of Emilia. Emilia is complete absence of one or more extremity. We have got the definition of meromelia, partial absence of one or more extremity. Micro, matlab, short. So, presence but abnormally short extremity. Phacomelia means long bones are absent, small hands or feet are attached to the trunk by short irregular bones. So, we have got the correct answer, meromelia, partial absence of one or more extremity. So, is it clear to everyone? Can I move to the next? Everyone? Motilal, Prakhar, Amol, okay. So, can we can move on to the next MCQ. Okay, so let us move on to the next. Most uh, zone of prostatic kosh, most common, so most common, the correct, uh, the MCQ, most common zone of prostatic carcinoma is, Four options are there in the zone. So, this is the MCQ regarding the, uh, this is the MCQ regarding the zonal anatomy of prostate cancers or prostate gland. So, which zone of the prostate gland is commonly involved uh, as the zone uh, for the prostatic cancer, whether it is the anterior zone, whether it is transition zone, whether it is the posterior zone or central zone. So, what is the best answer according to you? I got an answer from Motilal. What about others? So, 
So posterior zone, the answer of Motilal is absolutely right. Posterior zone is the correct answer. If I talk about posterior zone, this is the area. If I talk about posterior zone, posterior zone is the area of prostate gland which is lying beneath the fibrous capsule. It is lying beneath the fibrous capsule. Yes, absolutely right, uh, Srinathar Prakhar, absolutely right. And it is surrounding the area of, it surrounds the area of distal urethra. It surrounds the area of distal urethra. So, posterior zone is the correct answer. So, let me uh, talk about uh, the other option. So, see here, this is the zonal anatomy of prostate gland which has been shown. So, here when we are talking about... Uh, Peripheral zone, you can clearly appreciate that the zone of peripheral zone, when we are talking about peripheral zone, this is the peripheral zone, this is the area of the posterior gland, this is the area of prostate gland which is surrounding the distal urethra, which is the most common area for the prostate cancer. Central zone, if we talk about the central zone, it is surrounding the area of ejaculatory duct, it is surrounding the area of ejaculatory duct. And if we talk about the area of transition zone, it is surrounding the area of proximal urethra. Fibromuscular zone, if I talk about fibromuscular zone, if I talk about fibromuscular zone, this is the zone which is lying in the anterior part of the gland. This is the zone of anterior part of prostate gland. And actually, this is the area where there is no glandular element. No glandular element. Prostate gland is the structure which is having a fibromuscular, uh, it is having gland, it is having glandular content, it is having fibers, stroma and all. But fibromuscular zone is there where there is no glandular element. So, no cancers, no cancers from this area, fibromuscular zone or anterior area of prostate gland. Most common area involved is peripheral zone which is surrounding the distal urethra lying beneath the fibrous capsule. So, we have got the correct answer C. Let us move on to the next that is question number 5th. Ovarian fossa is formed by all except. So, which of the following structure is not forming boundary for ovarian fossa? Ovarian fossa is formed by all except. Ovarian fossa is formed by all except obliterated umbilical artery, internal iliac artery, ureter, round ligament of ovary. Which of the following structure is not contributing to the boundaries of ovarian fossa? Four options are there. Mark the correct answer. So, you will get another 15 to 30 seconds. So, quickly write your answer. Then we can move on to the next MCQ. I got an answer from Prakha Tiwari. What about others? Motilal. Okay. So, yes. If I talk about ovarian fossa, this is the area lying in the lateral wall of the lesser pelvis and it is not having an any boundary of round ligament of ovary. So, the correct answer is D. Round ligament of ovary is not contributing to any kind of boundary for ovarian fossa. Okay. Obliterated umbilical artery is crossing its anteriorly. Ureter internal iliac artery is lying on the posterior aspect. So, let me show you a diagram for it. So, see here, this is the area of ovarian fossa. So, if we talk about external iliac vessel, so this is external iliac vessel which is crossing it antero superiorly. So, external iliac vessel is crossing antero superiorly, posteriorly it is crossed by. So, posteriorly it is crossed by, you can see here, this is the ureter. So, this is the ureter and this is internal iliac vessels. So, posteriorly this structure will lie posteriorly, this structure will lie antero superiorly. External iliac vessel will lie antero superiorly, posteriorly it is crossed by ureter and internal iliac vessels in the floor, in the floor or inferior aspect you can see obturator nerves and vessels, obturator nerves and vessels. On anterior aspect, it will have obliterated umbilical artery also related, but it is not having any of the boundaries which is formed from, it is not having any of this boundaries which is formed from round ligament of ovary. So, the correct answer will be round ligament of ovary which is not contributing to the boundary of ovarian fossa. That is the location of ovaries in the lateral pelvic wall. 
in the lateral pelvic wall. Okay, so let's move on to the next, that is question number 6. Yeah. All of the following structures passes through lesser sciatic foramen except. All of the following structures passes through lesser sciatic foramen except. Options are pudendal nerve obturator internus muscle. Pudendal nerve obturator internus muscle. Internal pudendal vessels nerve to obturator internus. So according to you which is the perfect right answer. Which is the structure which is not traversing or passing through lesser sciatic foramen. Your time begins now. Four options are there. Mark the correct answer. A, B, C, D. Give the correct answer for question number 6. Which is the correct answer for question number 6. Your time begins now. What is the correct answer dear? So, the correct answer is obturator internus muscle. So, obturator internus muscle is not traversing or passing through lesser sciatic foramen. So, B is the correct answer. So, the structures traversing is P, I, N, pin, pudendal nerve, internal pudendal vessels and N for nerve to obturator internus which is traversing through the uh, uh, through the greater and lesser sciatic foramen passing actually if we talk only about the exiting structure of lesser sciatic foramen the tendon of obturator the correct word should be tendon of obturator internus it should not be the muscle entire so actually for your mcq session it is important to know this list so in this list you can see the structures traversing through this uh, the structures traversing through greater sciatic foramen you can see here this is the green color area which is the greater sciatic foramen the structure traversing is pariformis muscle, superior gluteal nerves and vessels, inferior gluteal nerves and vessels, nerve to quadratus femoris, sciatic nerve and posterior nerve of thigh. So these are the structures which is in uh, which is shown in the green box is the structure exiting from greater sciatic foramen and if we want to see the structures which is exiting from only exiting from lesser sciatic foramen the correct answer is if we talk about this the correct answer is tendon of obturator internus. So, this will be tendon of obturator internus, not the entire muscle. If we talk about the structures which is passing through greater sciatic foramen and entering into the lesser sciatic foramen, that mnemonic will be PIN. Pin. That is P for pudendal nerve, I for internal pudendal vessels, nerve uh, that is artery and the vein and nerve to obturator internus and also nerve to obturator internus that is the pin structure so that will be the pin structure got it everyone that will be the pin structure so let's move on to the next that is question number seventh which of the following is a derivative of richard's cartilage so this is easy one mark the correct answer which of the following is a derivative of Richard's cartilage whether it is tapes whether it is malus whether it is incus or whether it is sphenomandibular joint which is the correct answer which of the following is derivatives of Richard's cartilage four options are there tapes malus incus and sphenomandibular joint So, whether it is right or wrong, mark the correct answer, my dear aspirants. Your time starts now. Derivatives of Richard cartilage. The first thing is that Richard cartilage is derivative of which pharyngeal arch? So, Richard's cartilage is a derivative of second pharyngeal arch. It's a derivative of second pharyngeal arch. And the correct answer for this is steps. So, steps is the correct answer which is the derivative of Richard cartilage. Malus incurs phenomandibular joint. So, these are all derivatives of first arch. One, first arch. Only A is the correct answer that is the steps. Okay. Cartilage of the second pharyngeal arch is Richard's cartilage. If we talk about the second pharyngeal arch cartilage, the name is Richard's cartilage and its derivative is following. The derivatives are stapes, the smallest ear or cycle, the steloid process of the temporal bone, the stylohyoid ligament attached to the steloid process, 
the smaller corona of the hyoid bone and also the superior part of the body of hyoid bone so all these list of the structure list of structure small corona of the hyoid bone superior part of the body of hyoid bone stylohyoid ligament steps and steloid process of the temporal bone all these structures together contribute to the derivative of second pharyngeal arch that is the derivatives of richards cartilage so got it everyone can we move on to the next that is mcq number 8 so let's move on to the next that is mcq number 8 level of spinal cord at birth what is the level of ending of spinal cord at birth whether it is upper border of l1 lumbar vertebra upper border of l3 lumbar vertebra lower border of l3 lumbar vertebra or lower border of l1 so level of spinal cord ending is corresponding to which of the following location a b c or d four options are there mark the correct answer mark the correct answer your time begins now level of spinal cord at birth is my dear asman the correct answer is b that is upper border of l3 lumbar vertebra the correct answer is upper border of third lumbar vertebra i would like to show you with this diagram okay so i got a correct answer from prakhar tiwari absolutely right lower border of l1 is the level of ending of spinal cord in case of adults and at birth the ending point of spinal cord is at the level of upper border of l3 lumbar vertebra i would like to show you with this diagram where you can see if we will see the embryo till the third month of intrauterine life so till the third month of intrauterine life what you can see both the spinal cord both the spinal cord so here you can see both the spinal cord and the vertebral co column is corresponding at the birth it is corresponding to the upper border of l3 l3 upper border now in adults you can see it is ending at the lower border of l1 lower border of l1 lumbar vertebra sometimes it can end in between l1 and l2 lumbar vertebra also so we have to pick the most correct answer so upper border of l3 is correct for the eighth number mcq ending point of spinal cord at birth okay let's move on to the next that is question number 9th coraco humeral ligament is degenerated part of which of the following muscle it's a degenerated part of biceps brachii it's a degenerated part of coraco brachialis it's a degenerated part of pectoralis minor or latissimus dorsi coraco humeral ligament is degenerated part of which of the following biceps brachii coraco brachialis pectoralis minor or latissimus dorsi mark the correct answer for question number 9 your time begins now a b c d 15 seconds will be provided to you and then i will move up with the explanation so prakhar uh, tiwari is giving the answer b what about others what about others venkates motilal amol so my dear aspens the most correct option is according to the research paper it has been seen that coraco humeral ligament which is connecting the coracoid process of the scapula and that of the greater tubercle of humerus that is actually the degenerated part of pectoralis minor muscle so c option is correct this is also from the previous year neat pg mcq pectoralis minor is the correct answer so see here coraco humeral ligament actually which is connecting the coracoid process so this structure which you are seeing is the coracoid process of the scapula this is the coracoid process of the scapula and getting connected to the gt gt of humerus what is gt greater tubercle of humerus so it is extending from coraco humeral co ligament extending from coracoid process to the greater tubercle of the humerus and morphologically this was asked in the mcq and a very important point to note down morphologically it is the representation of degenerated component or part of pectoralis minor muscle pectoralis minor muscle okay so correct let's move on to the next that is question number 10 nerve supply what is the nerve supply of circumvallate papilla what is the nerve supply of circumvallate papilla 
ऑप्शन ए ग्लोजोफेरेंजियल नर्व कोडा टिम्पैनिक नर्व वेगस नर्व लिंगुअल नर्व अकॉर्डिंग टू यू विच इज द करेक्ट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन नर्व सप्लाई ऑफ सर्कम वैलेट पैपिले नर्व सप्लाई ऑफ सर्कम वैलेट पैपिले अकॉर्डिंग टू यू विच इज द करेक्ट आंसर डियो A, B, C, D. Easy one. You can give the answer. All the best. So first thing is that you have to know circumvalent papilla location, and then you can give the answer. Actually, nerve supply of uh, tongue is a very important topic. It has been often asked as a clinical MCQ also. The correct answer for this uh, question number tenth is that glossopharyngeal nerve, circumvalent papilla. Nerve supply is by Glosso pharyngeal nerve. So this has to be noted to you. So let me show you diagram. Actually, you can see here if we talk about the innervation of the muscles. Innervation of muscles means motor supply. So if I talk about innervations of the muscles, motor supply, all the muscles of the tongue is innervated by twelfth cranial nerve except platoglossus. What is the innervation of platoglossus nerve by the tenth cranial nerve? By the tenth, only platoglossus muscle is having innervation by 10th cranial nerve otherwise all the muscles of the tongue is getting innervation by 12th cranial nerve hypoglossal nerve now if we talk about sensory innervation of the tongue you can see here actually the anterior two third part of the tongue so this is the anterior two third part of the tongue and the anterior two third part of the tongue is getting this is the part of the tongue which is developed from first pharyngeal arch this is the part of the tongue which has developed from first pharyngeal arch and it is getting innervation from general sensory by lingual nerve and coda tympanic nerve is the taste sensation so this is very important for you to know why i will tell you because it is so many times has been asked so lingual nerve is the nerve of general sensation and coda tympanic nerve is the nerve of special taste sensation coda tympanic nerve is actually pre traumatic it is pre traumatic nerve of first arch so please don't get confused why because coda tympanic nerve which is giving the taste sensation which is providing taste sensation to the anterior two third part of the tongue is actually a nerve of or part of pre traumatic nerve of first pharyngeal arch now posterior if we talk about the whole of the posterior part of the tongue posterior two third part general sensation and also actually if we talk about circum um, if we talk about circumvalent papilla it is lying just anterior to sulcus terminalis this is sulcus terminalis but being in the part of anterior part of the tongue also this circumvalent papilla is also getting innervation from glossopharyngeal nerve so please know this point this is also important whole of the posterior part of the tongue along with circumvalent papilla as you can see along with circum these are all circumvalent papilla c for circumvalent papilla located anterior to sulcus terminalis is also getting innervation from glossopharyngeal nerve and that of posterior most part of the tongue and that of posterior most part of the tongue posterior most part of the tongue along with epiglottis is getting innervation from internal laryngeal nerve so posterior most part of the tongue plus epiglottis is getting innervation from internal laryngeal nerve glossopharyngeal nerve is giving innervation to posterior one third part of the tongue plus circumvalent papilla plus circumvalent papilla so i think this explanation is clear and this is a a uh, very easy diagram to understand all the points of innervations of the tongue so the correct answer will be glossopharyngeal nerve giving innervation to circumvalent papillae now my dear aspirants before ending the session i would like to tell you that those students who are interested for taking the neat pg subscription can either go for plus or iconic subscription they can opt any one of this the pricing detail has been shown to you one of the thing is that you have to use uh, you can use my code and add 10 so if you use my code and add 10 you will get an additional discount already the rates are discounted at 10% additional discount of 10% that means a more than 20 or 20% discount on the plus or iconic subscription you can be provided with the iconic and plus subscription more than 20% discount so just go for it and grab this opportunity this will be highly beneficial for you also 
uh, be connected for special an academy uh, on the special an academy platform for free sessions of the an academy for free sessions of the anatomy you can join the an academy platform you can use my code anat10 to down uh, to unlock the code and you can be present for free sessions so thank you so much all the best keep studying and you can get the link of all my sessions which is provided on let's crack neat pg platform on also onto the inict group of an academy so neat pg platform of an academy so you can grab that opportunity and you can be the part of my free sessions and also the plus subscription you can use the code and attend to unlock and be present for the session all the best keep studying thank you so much so tomorrow free session 6 pm and 7 30 pm will be the youtube live session of mcq session all the best keep studying thank you my dear aspirants thank you